Please sit down. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Rod Coombs, and as Deputy President of the University of Manchester, it's a great pleasure to welcome you all here to the University of Manchester and to the City of Manchester. Um, we've had some splendid Manchester weather over the last week and a half for these graduation ceremonies, but I think um, the, uh, the Assembly this morning has shown particular judgment and discernment for choosing the 10 o'clock ceremony because by 12.30 it will be raining, I can assure you. <laughs> a welcome, of course, to the graduands. Today is your special day, but also a particular welcome to family and friends of the graduands. I know that many of you have traveled long distances to be here today. We welcome you particularly to the university, and we thank you. We thank you for the help and the support and the encouragement that I know you've given to the graduands during their studies. We're very aware that you've provided all kinds of support, advice, encouragement, and of course, probably some financial support to the graduands. And so in one sense, this, this day is a milestone in your contribution to these achievements, as well as to the achievements of the, the graduands themselves. Let me now speak for a moment to the graduands directly. Students have been graduating in this Whitworth Hall for over 100 years. So when you graduate today, you are following in the footsteps of thousands of former graduates who have then gone on to achieve and contribute in every walk of life. Students from the University of Manchester have reached the highest levels in science, in the arts, in business and in politics. But of course things have changed quite a lot over those hundred years that students have been walking up these steps. When my generation first went to university in the late 1960s, Fewer than 10% of 18-year-olds in the United Kingdom went to university. Now, of course, the figure is higher than 40% attending university. When I came to this university as a postgraduate student in the early 1970s, I won't specify which year, um, the university was only about a third of the size that it is now, and 70% of the students were male and only 30% female. So that's one, uh, one thing that we've put right uh, in the 40 years that I've been here. This expansion in the scope of university education, both in the country at large and in Manchester in particular, and this rebalancing is, of course, uh, a correct and appropriate thing. It reflects very well today's society in which knowledge and the capacity to keep learning are the essential attributes which enable us all to earn a living and to realize our potential. The world we live in now has changed a great deal, even in the time that I've been in the university. Knowledge, the scope of knowledge, the application of knowledge, and the pace at which knowledge changes uh, has just increased phenomenally. Markets, organizational structures, uh, and forms of regulation are broken and changed regularly, and we struggle to keep up. The global economy certainly does exhibit the phenomenon which the celebrated Austrian economist first called, the economist Joseph Schumpeter first called gales of creative destruction. So in this type of world, I think we are all more dependent than ever before on knowledgeable professionals to provide us with the very specialized and vital goods and services that we all consume. So put it simply, the world simply would not work, would not work at all, without a supply of people trained to graduate level and beyond. So I hope and I'm confident that the knowledge and skills that today's graduates have developed here in Manchester will help them to navigate and succeed in this very turbulent environment. Now you may think that all this talk of specialisation and knowledge and technology is only relevant to the, to the students in the science and engineering faculties. You may even think I've picked the wrong speech out of my file this morning. But no, let me, let me affirm that students in the disciplines of arts and languages and cultures, in their careers, will themselves only succeed to the extent that they acquire detailed and specialist expertise. Who now respects a journalist who is not an expert in a particular field, rather than a generalist? Who now thinks that any work of art is not produced, uh, especially if it's for the broadcast media, 
by complex teams of people all playing different and specialized roles. And then again, within a matter of maybe a few years or a decade, making an abrupt and radical change and moving to a different area of specialization and learning all over again, perhaps multiple times in your careers. So despite the fact that you were all students of the arts and students of um, historic and deep literatures and cultures, nonetheless in your careers, your deployment of your intellectual muscle will involve specialization, expertise, focus and choice of scope rather than simply flitting from one thing to another. Some of you graduating here today have gone beyond the undergraduate level and have carried out research to gain masters or doctoral degrees. And this has taken you even closer to the leading edge of change. All of you have taken on the challenge of mastering and using complex ideas, which of course have been built up over many years preceding by other researchers who have gone before you. You should feel proud to be part of that tradition and of your achievement and contribution to it and you should relish taking it further. And we in turn feel very proud of you for that contribution that you have made as Manchester graduates to the sum total of knowledge. And we know that you will use that knowledge and your skills to do further good work in whatever field you enter. I'm sure that in your time here, you've learnt more than simply the complexities and content of your discipline and your subject. Universities, as you know, exist both to create and to transmit knowledge, and we've evolved some very special principles and values to enable us to do that. And chief amongst those is the principle of freedom of opinion and debate. Challenge and argument are at least as important as consensus, whether in the laboratory or the seminar room or in the corridor or in the pages of the learned journals. And those values of debate and openness to ideas are not only relevant in the sphere of scholarly endeavour. Those values of openness have a wider benefit, I believe, in the way that we interact with each other in life in general. So I hope you will nurture those values of openness and freedom of opinion. For each generation, life appears to get more complicated, more internationalised, more global. We all have to cope with more and more complexity. And to do that, you need not just mental, but cultural flexibility and openness to change and openness to difference. And I do hope that you will um, look back on your time at Manchester and realize that that was when you acquired some of those skills, as well as the particular knowledge of your subject. Now that you're graduating, your hard work is rewarded and you and your families and friends should feel justly proud of your accomplishments. And through your work and your participation here in the university during your time here, you have all enriched the university and we thank you for that. As I said at the beginning of these remarks, your families and, and friends have played a vital role in supporting you emotionally and financially during your studies. And soon they'll be applauding as you walk up on the stage. So let's reciprocate. So please, can I ask the graduates to stand and to face your families and friends? Stand up, please. Thank you. And now give your families and friends a round of applause. Very good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You can sit down now. Take it while you've got it. So soon you will be leaving the University of Manchester and you will have the brand of Manchester on your CV um, for the rest of your careers. And in doing that, you will be joining 300,000 alumni of the University of Manchester around the world with whom the university is regularly in touch uh, through the wonders of the internet and through other means. Uh, when, when senior members of the university travel to other countries, uh, when, when I go to China, I can fill the largest ballroom in the largest hotel in Shanghai with graduates of the University of Manchester. Of course, it's not me they've come to see, it's each other, and they swap business cards and uh, do what alumni do the world over. You're joining that, that group now, that international group of alumni. Make sure that you, you use it to your benefit.
and make sure that you come back and remain in contact with us um, during your careers. So in a moment, I will um, pass the lectern to Professor Jeremy Gregory, head of the School of Arts, Languages and Cultures, to say a little bit more about the school and uh, today's graduates and their particular achievements. But it just remains for me to congratulate you all once again, um, to say that I hope you have a, an excellent ceremony um, and some good time in the open air outside before the rain comes later this afternoon. You have a great day. Thank you very much. Deputy President and Deputy Vice-Chancellor, colleagues, graduands, and your families and friends, as head of the School of Arts, Languages, and Cultures, I'm delighted to congratulate those of you graduating today on your stunning success in obtaining your degrees. Colleagues in the school are extremely proud of what you have achieved. They have worked closely with you for three or four years or more. Some of you graduating today have studied with us for your BA, MA and PhD programs, meaning that you've shown loyalty to us for over seven years and you've become very much part of our academic community. Many of you being awarded a PhD today have also been graduate teaching assistants, working alongside us in teaching our undergraduates so that you are our valued colleagues as well as our inspiring students. We hope that you found your time here intellectually and academically stimulating because whatever else studying for a degree gives you, the experience should have been one where you found yourself both challenged and excited. And I'm extremely grateful to my colleagues for having given you that experience. And for many of you, I have no doubt it will have transformed your lives, though you may not know it yet. I therefore ask you all to join me in thanking the teaching and support staff for all their efforts and dedication during your time with us. This ceremony in our magnificent Whitworth Hall reminds us of the bold Victorian hopes and aspirations for our university, and it also reminds us that the subjects studied by you for your degrees have a long and distinguished record at this institution. When the university was first founded in 1851, English was one of the de degree subjects offered decades before Oxford and Cambridge, quote, for the general cultivation and discipline of the mind. And one of the first three professors had the duty of teaching English language and English literature, but also logic and mental philosophy. Manchester pioneered the study of American studies in the UK and has been teaching it since 1947. Creative writing has been taught here since the 1990s, but it was in 2007 that we established a center for new writing, concentrating principally at the postgraduate level but from this year, we've taught it at undergraduate level as part of a named program. Some of you are studying joint honors programs involving modern languages, and Manchester is one of the few universities which can boast of teaching a broad range of languages, and some of these have been taught here since the Victorian period. I'm very pleased to say that today, English, American studies, creative writing, and languages are flourishing areas within the school known for their excellent teaching and research. In research terms, colleagues in English and American studies are ranked second equal in the UK for their publications and research activity. And several of our language departments are placed top in the country. This year, we've been delighted to welcome two new lecturers in American studies, and we have just appointed new colleagues in medieval and early modern literature. These are replacement posts for two of our long-serving professors who are retiring this academic year, Professors Gail Owen Crocker and Professors Jackie Pearson. We thank them for their hard work and wish them a long and happy retirement. What may be good for you to know is that students of English, American studies, and modern languages are among the most highly employable of all graduating students. 
Graduands at this ceremony have all completed a degree in some aspect of the study of literature, language, history, or culture. And whether you've studied the literature, history, or culture of the United Kingdom, Europe, or the US, what arguably unites you all is an interest in what makes us human, the creation of identity, and what it is to be part of humanity. And many of the degree programs you have studied examine the most controversial and exciting topics of the time, such as in issues of gender and sexuality and the relationship between the local and global. And they signal the university's commitment to exploring the grand challenges of the day. Students this year have produced some outstanding work, and I'm pleased to announce a number of prizes. Our most stellar student on the English Literature Programme and the recipient of one of the two Samuel James Woodall Prizes is Harriet Hill Payne. As a footnote, Harriet's final average was the highest of the year, and it featured an outstanding mark in Histories of the Devil. The other S.J. Woodall Prize for Outstanding Work in English Literature goes to Caris Lapwood. <laughs> the Thomas de Quincey Prizes are awarded to the two best final year long essays in English Literature, and these go to Paige Wilson and James Courtney Clack. The G.L. Brooke Prize for Work in Medieval Studies goes to Alex Cox. And the Mary Catherine Slater Prize is given to a student who achieves a good upper second degree in spite of personal difficulties. And this prize goes to Laura Henshaw, who has completed her degree after several years, contending with serious illness throughout. Very well done. The A&M Kaiser Prize for the best dissertation in American history is awarded to Moira Crockett. <laughs> the Dennis Wellen Prize for exceptional achievement in American studies goes to Anthony Day. <laughs> the Jesse Davis Candell Prize goes to Daniel Teasdale a student on the English Literature and American Studies degree who received 79 for his long essay on post-millennium horror at the movies. <laughs> the Faye Mitchell Memorial Prize goes to Harry Riley Gould. <laughs> the Poetry Book Society's Student National Competition winner is Annie Muir. The Adam Kay Prize for the best dissertation in art history goes to a student in Portuguese and art history, Victor Komorowski. The J.W. Rees Memorial Prize for finals performance in Spanish goes to Lucia Ruggiero, who graduates in English and Spanish. <laughs> the outstanding overall performance in Russian goes to Amy Brew, who graduates in linguistics in Russian. <laughs> and the Wadsworth Prize for French goes to Peyton Squires, who graduates in history of art and French. The school's web and social media officer has asked me to remind you that the school is running a graduation selfie competition. So please tweet us your selfie if you want to take part. I should add that selfies should not be taken during the ceremony. <laughs> After this ceremony, I invite you to join colleagues for a reception in the graduation marquee. I hope you thoroughly enjoy today 
Please keep in touch with us and visit us when you're back in Manchester. We wish you the very best of luck for the future and look forward to hearing how you're doing. Thank you. Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Rebecca Francis Pohl. <laughs> Daisy Black. Olga Michael. <laughs> Musna Rahman. <laughs> Patrick John Doyle. And for the degree of Master of Arts in Contemporary Literature and Culture, Nicola Jane Smith. <laughs> and in English and American Studies, Rachel Ann Crane. <laughs> and in Gender, Sexuality and Culture, Lawrence Aspen Webb. <laughs> and in post-1900 literatures, theories, and cultures, Helen Louise Saxton. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Arts in American Studies with honors, Kitty Baird. <laughs> Henrietta Barrett. No, no. <laughs> Louisa Budd. <laughs> Olivia Alice Corsan. Megan Gebhardt. <laughs> Dominic Green. <laughs> Francesca Guratsky. <laughs> Lily Alexandra Hall. Charles Harrison Dees. <laughs> Wallace Lee Hogan. <laughs> Helen Longstreth. <laughs> Chiara Middleton. Onyx Apria Peinado. <laughs> Melissa Prescott. <laughs> Harry Riley Gould. <laughs> Joshua Swales. And in English language and Chinese, with honors, Diego Valin Lopez. <laughs> and in English language and French, with honors, 
Emily Hodson. <laughs> Alice Lucy Hunter. <laughs> Laura Caroline Smith. And in English language and Japanese with honours, Gemma Warren. <laughs> and in English language and Spanish with honours, Rachel Emma Cochran. <laughs> Nicola Jane Fletcher. Katie Ellen Lorimer. <laughs> Olivia Jane Skinner. <laughs> and in English Literature with Honours, Phoebe Allen. Philippa Allen Kinross. <laughs> Flora Anderson. <laughs> Miriam Eileen Ballard. <laughs> Sarah Barraclough. Evelyn Barrett. <laughs> James Birchenough. <laughs> Imogen Fay Burgess. <laughs> Claudia Carvel. Sophie Churcher. Florence Cleverdon. Sophie Collins Walters. James Courtney Clack. Olivia Dakin. <laughs> Thomas Edward Daldry. <laughs> Rebecca Davies. <laughs> Michael George William Day. Sean Doherty. <laughs> Alistair Duggan. <laughs> Imogen Durant. <laughs> Alexandra Edge. Talisa Fate. <laughs> Dana Fowles. <laughs> Amrita Gill. <laughs> Sarah Grunwell. Nathan Harrison. Deborah Heady. Harriet 
Hill Payne. <laughs> Eleanor Rebecca Holland. <laughs> Nick Ismail. <laughs> Felicity Erica Rosa Kendall. Bethany Kirk. Sarah Elizabeth Kopech. Mary Kaye. Caris Lapwood. Hester McGarrow. <laughs> Alexander James Mackey. <laughs> Imogen Marsh. <laughs> Helen Lucy McCarthy. Annie Rose Muir. <laughs> Kirsty Elizabeth Mullock. <laughs> Sarah Murray. <laughs> Joanna Peddy. Madeline Payden. <laughs> Catherine Playdell. <laughs> Charlotte Poulter. <laughs> Holly Louise Rimatego. Mark Rocks. <laughs> Joseph Rose. <laughs> Ellen Scott. <laughs> Stephanie Scott. Jenny Sloan. <laughs> Abigail Louise Smith. <laughs> Tamara Stanton. <laughs> Marie Elizabeth Sutton. Katharina Swinburne. <laughs> Cecilia Tricker Walsh. <laughs> Rosalie Warner. <laughs> Sophie Weiner. Paige Wilson. <laughs> Jessica Claire Wire. <laughs> Hannah Catherine Young. <laughs> and in English literature, and a modern language with honours, French, 
Philippa Adams. <laughs> Katie Elizabeth Burroughs. <laughs> Hannah Costello. <laughs> Olivia Claire Rose Downing. Camilla Margaret Haddon. <laughs> ben Littledyke. <laughs> Hester Lonergan. <laughs> Mary McCormack. Holly Pointer. <laughs> Nicola Proudlock. <laughs> and in English Literature and German with honours, Albert Brett. <laughs> and in English Literature and Italian with honours, Noor Adil. <laughs> Genevieve Rosanna Barrett. <laughs> and in English Literature and Spanish with honours, Nicholas Stephen Butterworth. Rosie Charsley. <laughs> Iona Heseltine. <laughs> Lauren Hunter. <laughs> Emma Lambert. Simeon John Mitchell. <laughs> Lucia Ruggiero. <laughs> Isabella Timothy. And in English Literature and American Studies, with honours, Natasha Ahmed. <laughs> Alastair Atchison. <laughs> Gregory Baker. Victoria Billsbury. Anna Carson Parker. Michael Crick. Moya Crockett. Anna Elena Fitzgerald. <laughs> Isabel Eve Granger. <laughs> Lily Hamburger Bland. Lawrence George Holt. <laughs> Hannah James. <laughs> Ma
Martha Alicia Loder. <laughs> Elena Lum. <laughs> Tessa Josephine Martino. Angus John Nisbet. Charlotte Rayner. Sean Richardson. Joseph Daniel Francis Roberts. Federica Signorini. <laughs> Laura Jane Sullivan. <laughs> Kate Taylor. <laughs> Daniel Jack Teasdale. Louise Sarah Thornsby. <laughs> Rebecca Williams. <laughs> Jessica Taylor Wilson. <laughs> and in French and linguistics with honors, Grace Glenny Smith. <laughs> and in German and linguistics with honors, Chris Borgars Smith. <laughs> Lauren Annalena Jessica Jane. Catherine Jane Scanlon. <laughs> and in History and American Studies, with honors, Charlotte Connor. <laughs> Rebecca Jane Delaney. Alicia Claire Dickinson. Imogen Gordon Clark. Sarah Lindsay Long. Kai Riak. Nicholas Salmon. <laughs> Nihal Tharu Menon. <laughs> Heather Wall. <laughs> Thomas Ward. Lawrence Williams. <laughs> and in history of art and a modern language, French with honors, Isabel Hansen. <laughs> Peyton Squires. Lucy Lorraine Tregana. <laughs> and in History of Art and Italian 
with honours. Eleanor Middleton. <laughs> and in History of Art and Portuguese with honours, Victor Komorowski. <laughs> Prina Taylor. And in Japanese and Screen Studies, with honours, Roxanne Hatton. <laughs> and in Linguistics and Russian, with honours, Amy Elizabeth Emma Brew. And in Linguistics and Spanish with Honours, Robert Richard Flood Watson. <laughs> and in Spanish and Screen Studies with Honours, Charlotte Tweddle. So finally, on behalf of the university, I once again congratulate all of you graduating here today on your excellent achievements, and I wish you every success and happiness in your future careers. And I hope the rest of the day is very good for all of you. Thank you very much. I now declare this ceremony closed. Thank you.